Welcome to It's Your Ego, Stupid, a show lovingly intended for millions of spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people like you who may at times be led into ego stupidity, a lesser version of yourself and a lesser version of life. This show will give you a much deeper understanding of what ego is, what it's doing to your life, how it can weaken your human and spiritual wellness, and how you can heal in each of these areas if needed. It's Your Ego, Stupid will heighten your awareness of the intense link between your ego and spirit, your humanity and divinity, and the synergy that can lead to the best version of you and your life. Your host is Dr. Nick Martin a licensed psychologist who has worked in the clinical, university, school, and private practice settings over the past 40 years, while serving as a therapist, diagnostician, educator, and consultant. Welcome again to It's Your Ego, Stupid, and now your host, Dr. Nick Martin. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Nick Martin, also known by some as Ego Man. Due to my intense focus on ego, and how it's impacting our lives, both humanly and spiritually. I want to thank you for listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. I hope you've had a great week as you go about meeting the many important challenges that we all face, which during today's show will have us looking at how higher ego power contributes to difficulty in resolving conflicts, arguments, or disagreements in a healthy manner the kinds of conflicts, arguments, and disagreements that take place in daily life involving our friends and family, acquaintances and strangers, co-workers and supervisors, conflicts involving significant or important matters, as well as those involving small, petty, or insignificant things. In fact, the more frequently these kinds of fights and arguments occur over little things, the more reflective they are of ego energy issues. Unfortunately, the conflicts taking place are often poorly resolved or never resolved for those with unhealthy ego energy, creating lots of distance and destructiveness in many of the closest relationships people experience and blocking the opportunity for people to move on and to experience the better things that can happen in the relationship. This is why I consider it to be one of the important life areas, that is, the ability to effectively resolve conflict. So much healthy living is lost when conflicts are poorly or never resolved. They're never over. They're never done with. And we're seeing this difficulty playing out on a societal level in the polarity in this country and tribalism, which is reflective of a collective, ego stupidity, even though those who are participating in it are smart, spiritual, and mentally stable people. I'll be looking at this difficulty in resolving conflict in this and my other programs that are focused specifically on a particular imbalanced ego energy and its impact on resolving conflict, which again, during our program today, will have us look at higher ego powers effect on the poor resolution of conflict. But before we go more deeply into that focus, I want to mention that It's Your Ego Stupid is a program for spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people, just like you and me, who may at times be led by our ego into something I call ego stupidity, a lesser version of ourselves, and often a lesser version of life. Ego stupidity rooted in ego energy, affecting relationships with our family, friends, and co-workers, even ourselves, which could stand some improvement, maybe a lot of improvement. Ego stupidity rooted in ego energy impacting our efforts to achieve, to use our potential, to recognize the service in what we are doing and being able to experience a sense of meaning connected to our life's work. Ego stupidity affecting our ability to deal effectively with all of the changes, adversity, stressors, and conflicts taking place in our life, often leading to their managing us rather than our managing them. 
ego stupidity making it difficult to grow our mind with truth while keeping us stuck in faulty beliefs, values, attitudes, and prejudices with many acquired nowadays from unfiltered social media, fake news on the internet, and opinion news on TV, masquerading as truth, and often suggesting that truth doesn't matter anymore, leading many to avoid inconvenient truths, truths we need to hear, even though we may not want to hear them. Ego stupidity making it difficult to feel genuine, lasting happiness, while often leading us into unnecessary anxiety, anger, guilt, sadness, or fake happiness being substituted for the real thing. And finally, ego stupidity impacting our spiritual wellness and ability to be the love, life, and energy God is in our daily thoughts, words, and deeds. In short, impacting our ability to be our divinity in our daily life. As you can see, there are lots of important places that ego stupidity can make its appearance in our lives, the source of which is the nature of our ego energy. If things aren't going as well as you'd like in any of these areas, you've come to the right place because a lot of what's going wrong has nothing to do with our intelligence or the absence of spirituality or the presence of mental instability and has a lot more to do with our ego energy serving as the fuel for ego stupidity. Your lives, relationships, and experiences have taught me all of that over the past 40 years. And what I'm sharing with you in my website, my books, and shows about ego energy and ego stupidity, and how we can heal it with ego medicine when and where needed. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. During our show today, we'll be taking a look at the impact that higher ego power has on the way a person deals with conflict and how being overly empowered often leads to the destructive resolution or ending of conflicts often occurring in the form of fights, arguments, or disagreements. As a quick reminder, people with higher ego power have an intense need to exert power, control, and influence over what is taking place in their life including those that occur within the confines of conflict. For them, conflicts are winner-take-all situations. There is no such thing as a win-win conflict for them. Someone has to win, and someone has to lose. Losing in an argument or disagreement for those with higher ego power represents a loss of power and control which is something they are very sensitive to not happening and try to prevent at all costs. To them, win-win resolutions to conflict make no sense. The kind of resolutions where each person gains something important within the conflict. For, them with high, for those with higher ego power, there has to be a winner and they have to be that winner. Healthy compromises, need not apply. For them, that's just stupid and makes no sense. People with higher ego power are often involved in frequent conflict and can just as easily start fights as they are to being drawn into them. For them, conflicts are very personal because they involve their higher ego power at the root of them. They are a means to feeling empowered or being able to feel more empowered. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Well, there are millions of people who experience these difficulties because there are billions of people on the planet and every one of them has an ego, just like you and me. Some of these people are living in the role such as the dictator, the ultra competitor, 
and the rebel that I talk about in my book, The Two Voices Within. I want you to take a look to see if you or a loved one is experiencing any of the symptoms, the ego stupidity, and ego impact on spiritual wellness I'll be talking about today. I want you to diagnose you, because you're the only one living you 24-7. Now we're going to take a look at some of the symptoms that indicate if a higher ego power voice, which is the mixture of your ego energy and your mind, and whether it's talking to and through you in your life when you're confronted with conflict. And here is the first symptom. As I mentioned earlier, you don't believe in win-win conflicts. It's winner takes all. You know, the kind of conflicts that involve each person learning or gaining from being within the conflict. For the higher ego power person, conflicts are only able to be win-lose. And as I mentioned earlier, they have to be that winner. People with higher ego power need a resolution to arguments and disagreements in which they prevail, in which they are the winner inside of the conflict. And this can be something that's very significant and important going on in their lives, or it can be something very insignificant and very petty. As I said earlier, the small, little, petty kinds of things that people fight over can often be reflective of significant issues going on in one's ego energy. Here are some questions for you to think about in regards to this particular symptom. Do you think the object of a disagreement is to prove who is right? Do you think the object of a disagreement is to prove who is right? People with higher ego power often look at an argument or a disagreement or a fight as really about trying to prove who is right. Uh, often failing to realize that people come from different vantage points, different perspectives, different background uh, histories and information that can influence how they're looking at things. Uh, but the higher ego power person often has a, a tunnel vision, so to speak, in that this is about proving who is right and who is wrong. <laughs> Another question. Do you think that agreeing to disagree is stupid? You may have heard that agreeing to disagree, this is when people often are able to respectfully disengage from a conflict in the understanding that we're not going to come to a meeting of the, the minds, an agreement uh, as to which position should be had or taken, so we can respectively disengage by agreeing to disagree. But for people with higher ego power, Agreeing to disagree is another way of feeling disempowered or weakened because they didn't win the conflict. So some sort of neutral resolution doesn't work for them. Another question. Do you feel better after you win in an argument or a disagreement or a fight? People with higher ego power feel better and that idea of feeling better isn't just about the notion that maybe their position was more truthful, was, was found to be more truthful, but it's actually, it goes beyond that. It becomes something more personal, uh, having to do with them, somehow seeing themselves as better or greater than others as a result of having, quote, won the argument. So it's not only just about the ideas that may uh, be supported in their way of arguing or disagreeing, but it's also this, this sense of empowerment, this more personalization of what actually was the result of the disagreement. When you think of these questions and the symptoms, does any of this sound familiar to you? We're going to go on to the next symptom, which is that you try to force others into your way of seeing things and agreeing with you. People with higher ego power, uh, again, due to their intense needs to exert power, control, and influence uh, in their life, often feel a need to try to force others 
into the way of looking at things and agreeing with them. They even get to a place where they think they can make people think things that they're not currently thinking. So people with higher ego power are willing to fight to win in an argument at all costs. Because winning is so important and being sensitized to losing in an argument, they're willing to do things at all costs in order to win in an argument. Uh, so here are some questions connected to this symptom. Do you attack or insult the people you're fighting with? Do you attack or insult the people you're fighting with? People with higher ego power often step over the line of not only taking or advocating their thoughts or positions involving the disagreement, but they start to attack people as a as a second resort or maybe a last resort to make people think the way they think. So attacking or insulting people is just uh, the means to the end of their winning the argument and been having been proven right. Also, do you try to intimidate or humiliate people who have different views? People with higher ego power often utilize these, quote, techniques of intimidation or humiliation as a means to... Um, uh, trying to get people to abandon their way of looking at things and come on to their way of looking at things. And also, are you a lousy listener? People with higher ego power are often very poor listeners because listening in some respects reflects a loss of power, control, or influence because it means I might have to take on somebody else's ideas uh, within the disagreement or argument or conflict, and they don't want to do that. So they kind of shut off their, their willingness to pay attention and really get to know with what other people were thinking with whom they are in conflict. So when you think about these particular uh, questions and uh, the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? We're going to go on to one more symptom before we go to our first break. You carry a grudge when you have lost an argument and the conflict is not really over for you. So for people with higher ego power, they often bear grudges that don't end. They continue, even though the actual interaction where the conflict took, disagreement took place has stopped, but the person keeps carrying the grudge. So people with higher ego power experience a sense of disempowerment when they lose in an argument or disagreement. And it's been shown in, let's say, the example we're using, that they've really lost the disagreement. They've been proven wrong. And they experience that as a form of disempowerment uh, when they lose the argument or disagreement. And here are some questions that connect up with this particular symptom. Do you keep disliking or even hating the people you lost to? And this is part of carrying that grudge. These people represent a, a source of their weaknesses or disempowerment. So they feel angry or dislike or even hate the people that may, they have been lost to. Do you start ta thinking about how you can get back at them or how you can get even? Uh, again, it becomes very personal. Disagreements become very personal. And so, you know, they start to think about how can I win again against this particular individual? Or do you attack or beat yourself up for having lost in the argument? Uh, people with higher ego power are very unforgiving, uh, not only of other people at times, but also of themselves, as if something unthinkable happened, that they have lost in the conflict or disagreement or the fight, which is underneath it a reflection of being disempowered, an experience of being disempowered. When you think of these questions and the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? We're coming up on our first break. When we return, we're going to be looking at reflections of ego stupidity connected to higher ego power when people are dealing with conflict. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio. And I'll see you after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times.
Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on OM Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, Dr. Nick Martin here. I want to invite you to visit my website, egoandspirit.info, where you can find lots of information on ego and download your free ebook copy of It's Your Ego Stupid. Fix it to fix your life. Also, please visit the shop page where you can find each of my other books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, and The Two Voices Within. 19 brought to you by cdc and the ad council if you're feeling increasingly lonely right now you're not alone it's totally normal even though we may not be able to get together in person connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits join a virtual book club set up group text chats or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at reflections of ego stupidity and when it's happening in a higher ego power person's difficulties in resolving conflict. Some of these may seem odd or strange, weird, funny, or inappropriate, but that's because you're not living in that ego energy. But for those with higher ego power, it's leading them to engage in ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are affecting their ability to resolve conflict due to their higher level of ego power. It often leads them to conclude that the abnormal things they're thinking, feeling, or doing are normal when confronted with conflict. And unlike the symptoms, they can become their abnormal normal that they don't realize they're caught up in. But others often can because they're not looking at them through the same ego energy prism or lens or filter that the higher ego power person is looking through to see what's taking place in dealing with arguments, disagreements, and fights taking place in their life. And they're intelligent spiritual, imperfect, and mentally stable people. But unfortunately, they've gotten caught up in the web of an abnormal world of their own making due to their unhealthy, higher ego power energy. And they can remain stuck there until they heal the energy, leading them to the symptoms and ego stupidity that's taking place. Something they can do with the use of ego medicine consisting firstly of knowing what ego is and isn't. Coming to an awareness that ego is an energy at work in their life, that's intentions are, that its purpose that is, is to promote their survival. And also learning that ego does not have an intellect. It's not thinking for them. They are thinking for themselves based upon the energy the ego energy flowing into their mind, and also understanding that ego doesn't have an intentional quality. It's not attempting to impact their life life in any particular way, particularly when it comes to dealing with conflict. I mention this because oftentimes writers have suggested that our ego has this capacity to think and that it has the ability to form intentions, but it does not because ego is just an energy. It doesn't have a brain with which to think. It can't form intentions. 
it doesn't have an awareness of you. It doesn't have an awareness of itself, and it doesn't have an awareness of God. The second contributor to ego medicine is you tuning into your ego energy, meaning how much ego power, how much ego flexibility, how much ego vulnerability are at work in your life in those 10 key life areas that I talk about. And this is something that you need to do with my assistance because this is new territory. Something that you can do across the usage of my books, the website egoandspirit.info, as well as the various podcasts that I have that are available on the website. And then the third contributor to ego medicine is being able to replace ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts and beliefs ones that we create, with those which are connected to truth and reality, both human and divine. And the next part of our program today will deal specifically with this third contributor to ego medicine, which involves looking at reflections of ego stupidity for the disconnection from reality. These are the kinds of inaccurate, illogical, or irrational thoughts that people with higher ego power often bring into their efforts to resolve conflicts. And here is the first reflection. Winning a conflict means I am smarter, better, or a superior person than my opponent. The person with higher ego power often sees winning when they're in disagreements or arguments or fights as a means to seeing themselves as a better person, a smarter person, a superior person. And I think you can see a lot of the non-reality-based thinking that's going on inside of that particular thought, a thought that the higher ego power person doesn't realize is non-reality-based. And people with higher ego power often associate winning with empowerment. And so that's part of what drives uh, the person seeing conflict in that light or the resolution of conflict in that light being smarter, better, or superior because it, it's a thought that's compatible with their needs to feel empowered. And this is ego stupidity that can feed into additional ego stupidity that often happens, including that winning in an argument or a disagreement is the only thing that matters. Winning in an argument or a disagreement is the only thing that matters. Again, a non-reality-based thought, because there are lots of additional things that are often taking place inside of conflict, including the opportunity for us to learn things that we need to learn. But that's not something that resonates with the higher ego power person. It's more about empowering themselves through winning in the disagreement. Here's another reflection of ego stupidity. People will recognize my being smarter or superior as a result of winning. So the higher ego power person thinks that if I prove my ideas are better or I'm smart or are correct, they're the right ones, they're the truthful ones, that people are going to uh, look upon them as being better than them, smarter than them, or superior as a result of having won in disagreements or arguments. Again, that's a non-reality based thought because that's not usually the reaction that most people come away with um, in uh, their disagreements that may occur, particularly if they happen to involve somebody who's dealing with higher ego power. And one more thought that comes about that's an ego reflection of ego stupidity, which is that people re will respect or should respect more of my thinking than their own. This idea that people will start to think less of their own thinking and think more of their thinking. Again, a non-reality based thought that healthy people won't have that happen. People with high, healthy amounts of ego power, vulnerability and flexibility won't come to that conclusion. So that's a non-reality based thought. When your higher ego power is healing, you begin to realize that winning arguments doesn't reflect empowerment or superior superiority, particularly if the means to winning them is faulty. So if the kinds of things that people with higher ego power do to prove they're right 
are well uh, able, well recognized by, pe- by people who are in conflict with, with them, that's not going to be the um, the the conclusion they'll get from the interaction from that conflict. But until then, when you're thinking that winning a conflict means that you're smarter or better or superior and all the rest of what I share with you, well, that's your ego making you stupid. Another reflection of ego stupidity. I can't really learn anything from losing in a conflict. So the person with higher ego power often concludes that if I lose in a disagreement, argument or fight, that I can't really learn anything from that. And again, that's a non-reality-based thought because oftentimes there are lots of things to be learned when we fail in a conflict, so to speak, by losing it, that we are exposed to something we, we didn't know, that we needed to know, that could serve us. And so they are distant from that awareness, from that understanding, and that the effect of high ego power in leading one to think that I can't learn anything from losing in a conflict. Uh, people with higher ego power are so consumed with winning, with winning that they miss the value and opportunities that come with losing, sort of in alignment with what I've just said. They miss the whole idea that there's something equally important to come from losing in disagreements or conflicts, the learning that can take place, the growth that come that can take place. And this is ego stupidity that can feed into additional ego stupidity that also happens, including the notion that people can't teach me anything. People with higher ego power may often think that people can't teach me anything. Again, that's a non-reality based thought that people with higher ego power often get caught up with. Also, I'm the only one who can teach me anything. Again, another non-reality based thought. This this allows them to feel the sense of being empowered by being the only one that can teach them or help them to grow or learn. Again, that's a non-reality based thought. And I know that sounds silly or stupid for people to think that people think that, but that's what happens when you're caught up in that kind of ego energy, that higher ego power, including the idea that I'm the only one who can teach me anything. And then one more non-reality based Uh, reflection of ego stupidity. It's not okay for people to know more than I do. It's not okay for people to know more than I do. In a way, this is the reflection of the know-it-all. Again, a non-reality based thought because we often need to learn things that we don't know from other people, and that's a good thing. When your higher ego power is healing, you realize that conflicts are opportunities to learn, to grow, and become more Uh, truly empowered than you are. But until then, when you're thinking that you can't really learn anything from losing in a conflict, that's your ego making you stupid. One more reflection of ego stupidity. I should force people to agree with me. People with higher ego power believe that it's okay to force people to agree with them, that that means or that the end of their winning in the disagreement justifies the means. So people with higher ego power think that they should and that they can control the thinking of others. The boundaries of their higher ego power knows no end and they think they can actually make people think what they're thinking. And that this is ego stupidity, which feeds into additional ego stupidity. It also begins to happen, including that I should force people to agree with me because I'm right. So being right justifies this use of force. Also, that when people agree with me, it's real. Uh, They fail to realize that a lot of times people may just be conforming in an effort to just distance themselves from the person or to shut them up, but they don't really agree with them. And that also that it's okay to intimidate, insult, or humiliate people into agreeing with me. Uh, Again, there's this non-reality based thought at work that it's okay to do these kinds of things in order to get people to agree with me. The means just, the ends justify the means, so to speak. When your higher ego power is healing, you begin to realize that the use of force can't be used to shape the thoughts and minds of others. But until then, when you're thinking that you should force people to agree with you and all of the rest, well, that's your ego making you stupid. 
Now I want to share some specific in specific insights, ego insights connected to the symptoms and the ego stupidity I've been talking about. These are insights that can help you to better see what's going on behind the scenes and beneath the surface when it comes to difficulties in resolving conflict for those with higher ego power. These are insights intended to help you to see more of your ego blindness and what ego is actually doing when it comes to these difficulties. And here's the first one. Your higher ego power voice, that combination of your ego energy and mind, is weakening your ability to see how often you are winning the battle but losing the war in conflicts, particularly with loved ones such as your spouse or children. It's blinding you to the hidden costs that come with winning. In a way, you're failing to realize you're often losing the relationship as a result of your, quote, winning the conflict. And it's blinding you to the hidden impact you can be having on their self-confidence and their self-esteem that is unrecognized by you, how you are harming them in the way you handle conflict with particularly loved ones who are around you a lot of the time. And it's also blinding you to realizing how much people are just pacifying you with conformity and hollow agreement, something that I mentioned earlier. People are just often pacifying you to get you to shut up or to get some distance from you, but they don't necessarily really agree with what you're saying. When you awaken and are more conscious of your higher ego power, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. Our next insight, your higher ego power, the mixing of your ego energy and your mind is weakening your ability to recognize that arguments often become about feeding your needs for over empowerment and less about the issue at hand. It's leading you to miss how much over empowerment is guiding your participation in conflict. That's the real reason you're there more so than maybe the disagreement or the issue that's the focus of the conflict on the surface. It's leading to your inability to draw a line in what you're willing to do to win. You know, this ability to understand when the difference is between healthy disagreement, people we respect and can agree to disagree with and listen to, and forgetting that, being able to humiliate, insult, intimidate, uh, people in an effort to win. So that line is blurred for you. And it's leading you to lose touch with some of the lacking quality of what you're uh, using to support your position. So there's often a lot of non-truth, mistruth contained in what your disagreements might be about and, and what you're arguing for uh, with, but you don't see that because it's so much more important for you to win so that it just blurs the line between what's true and not true, all in the name of your winning. When you awaken and are conscious of your higher ego power, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. I'm going to mention one more insight. Uh, your higher ego power, is blend, the blending of your ego energy and mind, is leading your, to your misinterpreting losing arguments as reflective of weakness and stupidity. So you're misinterpreting a loss of an argument as reflective of weakness and stupidity. It's leading to your confusion of the difference between ignorance and stupidity. Ignorance is something we all possess because we're not born knowing everything. And even as we go through our life, there are so many more things that we don't know. And that's just reflective of ignorance. It doesn't mean we're stupid. But you confuse the two because your, disempower, your issues with over-empowerment have contributed to that confusion. And it's leading to your lack of respect for the value of learning from others. Leading to your lack of respect for the value of learning from others. So much to learn that you're not willing to learn. And it's leading to your overly personalizing arguments and disagreements. Disagreements turning to comparisons regarding personal qualities, particularly intelligence and you're missing all of that because the ego energy is blinding you to it. When you awaken and are more conscious of your ego power, your higher ego power, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. We're coming up on our second break. When we return, we'll be looking at ego's impact on our spiritual wellness. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio.
and I'll see you after the break. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Oak Times Radio a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at how higher ego power can impact our spiritual wellness when it comes to coping with and resolving conflict. We're looking at ego's impact on the connection, which is actually a disconnection between our humanity and our divinity. The disconnection from the God within our being which is one of the four divine gifts that we've all been given. The gift of God within, that makes it possible for all of us to exist, to live. The lessening of our spiritual wellness involves gaining distance from being the love, the life, and the energy God is within our thoughts, words, and deeds, when ego is getting in the way of resolving the conflicts taking place in our life. Each of these can be undermining our spiritual wellness by distancing us from God, the God within us, our divinity. Here are some examples of ego's impact on spiritual wellness for those with higher ego power who are failing to be their divinity when being involved in conflict. We'll get started with ego's impact on being the love God is when dealing with conflict. People with higher ego power have difficulty being spiritually well when needs for over-empowerment weaken their efforts to manage and resolve conflicts with unconditional, connective, unburdened, and unlimited love. Your divinity involves lovingly managing and resolving life's fights, arguments, and disagreements within healthy empowerment that is respectful of all involved in them. When your higher ego power and over-empowerment prevents you from lovingly resolving all of the conflicts that life will bring forth, you're not able to be the unconditional love God is. We must bring unconditional love to the arguments and disagreements that occur with our family our friends, and all of our neighbors, so that we can live in peace and love with each of them. When your higher ego power and over-empowerment weakens meeting life's conflicts with love, you're not able to be the connective love God is. We must lovingly work with those with whom we are in conflict so that we can learn and grow from each other within the opportunities that healthy conflict provides for this to happen. When your higher ego power and over-empowerment are burdening you with anger and fear, rather than love, in working with life's inevitable conflicts, you're not able to be the unburdened love God is. 
we must bring love into our conflicts so that they can be resolved with growth, peace, and love, rather than anger, distance, and hatred. When your higher ego power and over-empowerment are limiting the amount of love you can bring to working to understand and manage conflicts, you're not able to be the unlimited love God is. The participation in conflict with unlimited love will open the door to learning what must be learned by each participant and resolving them with growth, peace, and love rather than anger, distance, and destructiveness. When ego is getting in the way, and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. Next, we'll talk a little bit about ego's impact on being the life God is when dealing with life's conflicts. People with higher ego power have difficulty being spiritually well when failure to recognize their intense needs for empowerment is leading them to dishonor and disrespect others when engaging in conflict with them. Your divinity involves recognizing, honoring, and respecting others while in conflict with them so that you can work with and resolve the arguments and disagreements taking place in peace and love. When your higher ego power and over-empowerment are leading you to dishonor and disrespect others with attacks and insults while in conflict, you're not being the life God is. The removal of your unhealthy sense of empowerment will allow you to honor and respect those with whom you are in conflict where attacks and insults can have no place. When your higher ego power and over-empowerment are leading you to dishonor and disrespect others with intimidation and humiliation while in conflict, you're not being the life God is. The removal of your unhealthy sense of empowerment will allow you to honor and respect those with whom you are in conflict, where intimidation and humiliation can have no place. When your higher ego power and over-empowerment are leading you to dishonor and disrespect others, with failure to listen to them, their ideas, and their views, you're not being the life God is. The removal of your unhealthy sense of empowerment will allow you to honor and respect others by listening to what must be heard, even when you disagree with it, and learning what must be learned. When ego is getting in the way, and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, or less spiritually well and failing to be your divinity, in which any conflict can be resolved in peace and love. Last, we're going to take a look at being the energy God is, and ego's impact on it, including the conflicts, disagreements, and ar arguments that life will bring forth. This involves being able to access healing, and transformative energy designed into your being to naturally occur when you're connected to human and divine truth. This is a capacity that's three million years in the making, just as all of the other wondrous things that we have been endowed with due to the wisdom of the ages and evolution. This is a capacity rooted in our common source, be it known by you as God, Allah, Yahweh, Vishnu, Great Spirit, Source, or another that I have failed to mention. People with higher ego power and over-empowerment have difficulty being spiritually well when failing to resolve conflicts within the light of truth and understanding 
that can be found when they are not being blinded by failing to recognize the limits to their human empowerment. Our divinity involves healing and transformation in which we are willing to work with and manage life's conflicts by seeking the truth and understanding that can be found within us and others when it is not being obscured by consumption with one's needs to be empowered. It involves healing and transformation in which we are taking responsibility for seeking truth and understanding when in conflict that is unencumbered by the distortion that over-empowerment often brings to dealing with conflicts in the light of truth. When higher ego power and over-empowerment is keeping you at a distance from knowing truth and understanding about the facts at work within conflicts, you're not being the energy god is in working with them. The removal of your unhealthy over-empowerment will open the door to deeper truth and understanding in which you can learn more about what you don't know and don't view this willingness as weakness or disempowerment. When higher ego power and over-empowerment is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding, that others can offer to you. You're not being the energy God is. The removal of your unhealthy over-empowerment will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of the potential wisdom others can be offering to you within conflict without experiencing this as a means to disempowering you. When higher ego power and over-empowerment is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding about the destructive impact your approach to conflict is having on others, you're not being the energy God is. The removal of your unhealthy over-empowerment will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of the ways you have harmed others while in conflict and allow you to resolve new conflicts in peace and love. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. As we leave our focus on ego's impact on our spiritual wellness, Please know that we often make God and our connection to God and others so much harder than it has to be. And this is what happens when unhealthy ego energy is getting in between us. God and life and we become so much better and so much easier when we remove that obstacle with ego medicine. As we leave our focus on higher ego power and difficulty working with life's conflicts, give some thought to the symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact I've shared with you. I hope what I've shared with you today will serve as a dose of ego medicine. And if any of it resonates with you, please help me to share it with others. I want to mention before leaving that you can purchase each of my books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, The Two Voices Within, and It's Your Ego Stupid, at the online bookstores for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Balboa Press. You can also purchase focused ego meditations on the shop page of my website, egoandspirit.info which can help you to know when you are truly speaking with your voice in your life and not egos as you go about healing your ego energy where needed in its power, flexibility, or vulnerability. I end today's show with this message. The great news is that working to heal your ego energy using ego medicine by growing your awareness of its symptoms, ego stupidity, 
insights and spiritual impact will allow the divine truth in your being to flow and shine through you and allow you to fully embrace each of the divine gifts. The spiritual part of healing is a given. It's part of your endowment. Divine truth and the divine gifts are part of your heritage that already exists within you. You need do nothing more to be spiritual because you already are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You only need to enhance your humanity with ego medicine so that all which is available to you is given. Fix your ego to fix your life, humanly and spiritually. Thank you for listening and allowing me to be your servant. Please have a great week and do come back to my next program. In peace and love, this is Dr. Nick saying goodbye for now.